Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I am Petter, Beetlejuice, Gentoo developer, many, many years uh, 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 since 05, council member, uh, developer lead, lead, developer relations lead, and so forth. Uh, let's start by asking how many developers we have present at the room. Please raise your hand. Ten two developers. Uh, yeah, good. A couple more. How many people are coming to the dinner afterwards? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about 20. Let's have to get those plates. How many extras as well? Yeah, let's take a closer head count. But we have a place reserved uh, for uh, about 20 people if we need more space. It's downtown. Um, gets 50% off today from the food. So, uh, Chelion, if, if someone has other suggestions, I can take those as well. But on the uh, Gen2 uh, topic, um, many developers here, probably users as well. So if you want to ask anything of the developers, that's uh, going to be good. Uh, had made plenty of good discussions uh, in previous years as well. And I asked around for a couple of topics to start with, is that uh, developer-wise, so EAPI 6 is something that interests people. What would you like to see, for example? So, um, anyone want to suggest, or should I throw my my ideas first, or no? So, uh, one thing that I see discussed is that how to split. I I would be interested in how people want to handle dependencies uh, with multiple variables, one variable and all them together uh, with the exerbo-like syntax or then it, as it is in separate variables. Do a quick, every, anyone, uh, developers know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, Grobian is just shaking his hand. Yeah, so the, the idea is that uh, that's floating around is pulling, putting them into one uh, variable and then labeling them like uh, build plus run plus something. And do you want this? Yeah, what's the win? People want to add new uh, types, so instead of having 10 yeah, new okay. bash variables. Okay, but we had. New te yeah, okay, but we had this discussion, I think, on the list, and, and people just wanted to have new, shiny, new things because it's more. But what does it more for us? So is it really worth adding five more shiny, new things? Because people want to do imaginary, new, shiny, new, cool, more. Plus One of my personal goals when doing it would be also to semantically change the current things. If you read the specs, for dpend and rdpend, it's pretty much broken. There, the it, official spec is, it can do whatever, kind of not not whatever, but it, because of historical reasons, they it couldn't nail it down. Do we actually ever use what we have built and do something like uninstall build dependencies? After we built it? Uh, I want to share two thoughts here. Uh, the first one is uh, about what you said about uh, new stuff, because it's new. Uh, you know, users mind work in a quite different way from developers mind. And usually users minds works like, oh, it's new, I like it, let's try it. Even if it's useless. Just because it's new, uh, we on the hardenet uh, world have seen that a lot of times uh, of things that are maybe not that necessary, but still you put them and oh, it's new, let's try it. Even if you say them not, don't do that. Uh, the other thing it's about the uh, runtime dependencies uh, and bulltime dependencies. Uh, there is also this thing it's called it, uh, binary distribution. Uh, it's passed out of Gen two. Uh, for example, we have, uh, uh, who is it called? Uh, I, I cannot remind the name, and I have been told it like one second ago. You're talking about Sabayon, right? Huh? Sabayon? Yes, Sabayon, exactly. Uh, 
uh, the thing is that the Savion users uh, should be able to install the build dependencies because they will have a binary system behind that will provide them. And it could be useful for them to be able to get all the dependencies they need from the builds. I mean, if they have to use a slightly different system there. But also, uh, to answer that question, if I don't know if you noticed, but Portage did change the uh, default behavior. If you update world, I don't think it includes purely pure, uh, build dependencies anymore. Yeah, so the default already is that it doesn't keep you up to date. So yes, they, there's already lots of stuff done with it, but uh, it's also uh, what it, if you start thinking about it uh, semantically, you can't really um, define all the dependencies you would need with the current setup, for example. Uh, and also, um, circular, uh, breaking circular dependencies and probably detecting them would uh, benefit from more fine-grained control, like is this thing only needed uh, at uh, package functions or um, is it um, only needed and that that way portage could do more if it had a little bit more information and its automation anyway um, it was uh, interesting to hear uh, from users uh, is there anyone here who has an idea that he would like to see in gen 2 and doesn't currently have it and motivate the developers here to deliver. Oh, it works better than. Honestly, I, I, I heart Gen 2. I've been using it for like 10 years now. Um, the only thing I really desperately need is a way to more documentation on some of the slightly more obscure things. Like I was given a Mac at my current job, and they said, use this Mac, and I didn't want to, and I wanted to install Gen 2 on it, and I have no idea how. Um, and the the docs for the installation process were there, but I, yeah, the, the wiki was there, but the, some of it was out of date, and it was referring to things that weren't active anymore, and other sites were saying, well, don't use that, so just a little more authority in terms of documentation would be good, too. But I mean, in terms of features, I, I heart Gen 2. It's, it's great. It does everything I want. Every time I want it to do something, it's already doing it. So you may be worrying too much about adding new features, at least from my perspective. Well, that's the thing. There's there's Gen 2 Wiki, and then there's something else that's. Yeah, cheeky. Wiki wise, there's the previous community run thing that had a DB loss, something, and twice. But then there's the infra run wiki.gen2.org, which is official official for the project, and hopefully the former will be obsoleted by everyone using the official one, at least what's blessed by us. So uh, I don't know. Uh, does anyone know is all the content being transferred? Or re like you can't transfer because of the licensing, but being made sure that it's available in the... Transfer of the, the documentation from the gentoo.org site, which is guide XML, towards the wiki is not a problem license-wise because we are using the Creative Commons attribution share like license, which has a, a clause that says that future versions are also uh, applicable. So we standardized on the, CC, on the license version 2.5. The wiki uses 3.0. So transferring documentation between uh, the two is not a problem. I mean, from the Gen 2 wiki dot thing. I remember reading, oh, okay, but the I, may, I the might wiki be dot com towards the, the wiki. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that, that's indeed, I think, with the GNU documentation license, it's also the Creative Commons one. So, yeah, that's indeed uh, incompatible. To, to answer a question on, on documentation, uh, well, I'm, I'm also one of the, the authors of many documents on uh, Gen 2. Uh, it's true that most of the documentation that we built for, for com commodity hardware will be up to date enough. And for, for less commodity hardware, it's difficult for us to, to write information about that. Uh, I can guess what the instructions would be for, for a, a Mac or an Apple, but uh, I think guessing would not be enough for, <laughs> for installing Gentoo on a thing. So it, it would be interesting if, if people who, who are uh, experiencing uh, or experimenting with a Mac 
of Gentoo could just write their blog information, and then I can easily move that towards a, a more official uh, format. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I can, I can imagine that. Yeah. So, work gave me a Mac as well, and I, I do have Gentoo installed on it. Uh, you, ha there's some trick in the EFI that you have to block out some memory section in order to get video to work right for me. Um, so, I'll see if I can actually document that for you. <laughs> yeah, I'll, s yeah, I'll, s we'll see. Not, not too much, I need him. Can you pass them? <laughs> yeah, you just use uh, Ubuntu and then ch root. <laughs> Many ways to the same place. Uh, yeah. Uh, one question that we had here on on, on the last meeting was uh, uh, user patches. There was some discussion on the mailing list about possibly enabling user patches uh, on all uh, e builds, and then there was the idea of of implementing user patching in the uh, EAPI. You can already do user patching if you just uh, stick some code in e yeah, slash to, uh, EDC slash portage. Patch, patch RC and then you have to implement uh, the code. Uh, I think user patching should be a bit hard in the sense that only people, uh, it's a support nightmare in the sense that unless very well thought out all the bu bugs uh, coming in to uh, box.gen2.org, uh, could, could, could debugging could get complicated if people can easily run stuff there that way. But when you when you uh, so uh, I guess the place is settled on uh, Shellion in. Uh, uh, yeah, the Grand Pla. Um, no one objected, at least, to that. So, um, I have the address as well, but it's over there. Hmm? Yeah, we could do that as well. The reservation is at eight. Uh, it'll probably take a while to get there, but uh, I don't. <laughs> um, like I was saying, for uh, as a user, the um, that solution is is very attractive to me because I can just put a patch there and emerge, and everything will be all fine. <laughs> but uh, if I'm submitting a bug on that uh, specific piece of software, uh, I, I doubt that I would ask the Gentoo developers to debug a patch that, I, that I've put. For example, in the in Bugzilla, when we submit the, the info, you could say, yeah, you, you have this patch, so. Yeah, but you have you this patch, so please emerge it without that patch. But if it's a patch you have written yourself and put in place, you, you're not b one of those users who, oh my god, this will make my stuff 10% faster no, kind no, of no, patch. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that if if that feature is standard, in is stand standardized in the EAPI and it, it works for all the packages, it will be fine for us. The, but is it really an e EAPI feature or package manager feature? It can be. But what what does the e build file have to know about user patches? For f yes. I I think the discussion was that. Um, you can do patching at a specific place. And right now the patch is just applied after unpack, but it might, might be applied at a different time. And then the e-build needs to know when to actually do the patch. And now. Um, so r relatedly to this, um, from both sides, where is a good idea and a bad idea? Um, MySQL, we apply a lot of patches. We have 
a five digit numbered series that we give the patches to make sure we have enough spaces to put the patches in. Um, and a bunch of times now we've gotten bugs where a user has made their own slightly different version of a patch and they had it under etc and they filed a bug this is broken um cmake didn't build that was the most recent one and they're saying i'm damn certain i fixed that um and the user was going on for a while two weeks later the user said ah crap i had a version of that patch sitting there nothing pointed that fact out ahead of time we, it absolutely needs to be in the emerge info for one but w at the same time when it happens does need to be controlled as well in the e classes because the ordering of those patches is so important. Yeah. Uh, that's exactly wh where I was going because uh, for for a thing like MUT, it's very it's yeah well there's plenty of patches and if people want to have their own patches in I'm fine. So what I did is whenever there is a user patch applied, I record in the version that there was a user patch applied. So when people report a bug, I can actually see that they have their own patches applied, which means try it without, and then uh, if it still dies, then it's my bug. But maybe indeed, if you want to do this on a global level, Portage should even record that there was a user patch applied. Uh, but it, yeah, it's a security thing, it's a convenience thing, uh, it's very hard, I think. Um, but you get this, but at least I think you should know whether or not a patch was applied, which basically means void warranty. I don't know whether it's uh, sacrilege to work, mention Debian stuff around here, but uh, we have a tool called Report Bug, which uh, does things like gives the diff between the packaged config files and the ones that are installed for the package that you're reporting the bug on. You could probably take something like that and patch it to also include the uh, patches that are in the machine, and it just stuffs it, stuffs it onto the bottom of the bug report. Yeah, and we already can, have that. And you, and you can uh, select whether to have it or not when you're reporting the bug. So it's, if it's a privacy thing, you just say no. Yeah, we are already have emerged dash dash info. The, then the question just is that we, we not everyone does that that well, and people have actually fo forged that information. But have you considered uh, user interaction when a patch is applied and runs emerge? It will actually ask him, you, are you sure you want to apply that patch? Uh, that's more secure because, for example, one could go and put some patches in there and there will get applied, yeah? Well, uh, it will stay, they will stay there. I mean, th there might be multiple, you know, whatever. It's it's it, it, when you compile something, you have to know that the patches applied. You have to give your consent. I mean, if 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 you put, uh, if you might have forgot the patch there, for example. Uh, the uh, well, uh, you could. Uh, that's a PM feature. Uh, if it has enough information, it can ask you. But like, um, by default, the builds are not interactive, and I don't want them to become interactive in any way. Uh, at least as a, in the default case. If one wants to, to put a patch on a package, it can easily go to uh, to the portage and add the, the patch, the patches, the subdirectory and stuff like that. Why do we have to do this whole thing of under slash etc? Uh, if currently, if you want uh, your changes would get over if you put it in the US in your portage directory, unless you are taking it out of CVS, it will get o uh, deleted when you sync next time. Yeah, but that m also makes sense because, so, sorry. What you mean is this, uh, you put it in Etsy, Portage, uh, Bash RC thing or something, your own hook to apply the patches, yeah. right? Uh, the, the idea is that the source changes, okay? I mean, we we're, we, we use a source distribution so we, we can play with this thing easier. I mean, I could just do a new build, throw it on slash var, apply my patch and continue. So why do I have to, why? And Way. Okay. If one it wants more control, it has the way to do it. If it was no, if it wants no control, he, he just goes and emerge stuff normally. Uh, user party, yeah, but we're talking a, a, a middle a thing in the middle that I, I think it messes things up. I mean, yeah. Uh, what I'm trying to understand from your uh, saying, you can. The answer is you can use use flags. If you want to 
patch or not your uh, source. Uh, so the, the idea is if you can make a use flag, if you use this flag, then patch it. Exactly before, exactly when you emerge, you know, you have the uh, option to use dot dot uh, dot. Uh, what what's the those are the Th those two? Yeah, you have the use flag to call the user patch. So I if you apply the use flag, it will apply the patch. If not, it does not apply the patch. So you have complete control over this with the use flag. And the use flags can can uh, give you the option to do everything you would want, even patch the patch. You know, yeah. <laughs> you have a use flag in the use flag, and patch the patch from the use flag. So that it's, it's complete, complete. I think user, pat uh, user patches shouldn't be handled by a user flag because uh, then we will end up with something like uh, has happened with the test. Use flag. It's, a te it's a nice use flag that when you check it says use it for testing the system. Oh, okay, yeah, sorry. So I think it's better if we instead use directly use a feature that says user patches. And that feature, since it will get notified when you do a merge menus info, uh, it, it we will know on the back that the user is using user patches. So we can tell him, please try without user patches. And if it's still failing, then filter back uh, again. I think that one of the things that was wanted was end user notification that user patches are being applied. Um, so having it in use flag is, would make it, I think, easier because emerge, huh? right, features are system-wide. And when you emerge something, merge dash v will show you use flags that are enabled and disabled. And you will see, oh, user flag is, or user patch is enabled. So uh, I think using the same methodology that was used for tests might be better in this case. And also, this way, maybe we have a we have a way to disable this functionality for some packages, like do not allow some packages to have this use flag. Yeah, that that's uh, that use flag seems more elegant uh, solution. I have also another thing to add uh, about the use flags. Well, let's say you have a source with uh, like uh, 20 configures, you know, you have a source with 10, 20 features. And uh, well, you want to diverge that source, you want to, dis we want to split that source to make like 20 packages with uh, each package with uh, one feature at a time for a single, uh, for a single um, package, for a single program. You need to, you have the possibility with the use flags and portage structure to rename the program name and name something like git, uh, git feature one, you know, git feature two and make each, each uh, for each feature, you can make a separate directory with the same e-build and different applied use flag. And this is some simplicity divided. Is it this, it's a, is the basic principles on which De Debian is based, you know? If um, Debian created the packages, the packages in, <laughs> in a, yeah, you can. I mean, if, you, if you want to do that, isn't it just much better in that case to create, create your own overlay? So it's very, very clear what you have done and why that is something for you. Because if I would say, okay, people like to apply user patches, that's fine with me, but it should be a simple on-off button, and we should be able to see that it is yes or no. But the simple on-off button isn't simple, because for something like PHP or whatever, compl where should this patch be applied? And at what moment is it applied? So how should it look like? What if it fails? So it is much more complex than just apply my patch for peep's sake. But, uh, you yes, but if if 
if uh, yeah, it's good, good. if it's a user patch, it's the user responsibility. If if the develop sorry. It's user responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> Not in I, so if you want to apply a patch, right? You can't just say whenever source prepare finishes, apply the patch. Because sometime you need to apply the patch somewhere before or somewhere halfway source prepare. So whoever maintains that package needs to know when or when not to inject the patch. But now you can have a patch that may be just a set statement or whatever that should just apply at a different location. Uh, that's what's making it difficult. Um, maybe if source prepare is not defined, we automatically call user patch just at the beginning. doesn't matter. But if it is defined, then we don't call it automatically. Yeah, it's hard. And when is when is and when is it in an E class? Yeah. Uh, so uh, I have another thing. There are uh, s in some situations you just want to enable a configure uh, uh, parameter on, on while uh, the on the configure uh, uh, script. Like there is a uh, th there's LLVM okay for Gallium and it had uh, support for uh, Radeon 600 okay. And you had you f all you needed to do is recompile LLVM with minus with uh, Radeon just to enable this option. Okay, so uh, you can you can do it with a, this with a patch because this is in another stage in the build. You have to edit the build and add this extra inside. econ for question. Yeah, is this an extra econ question? No, I, I think if we're going to allow p people to apply patches, we could easily we could allow people to create their own use flags in the same way, like. Uh, add config options. They so can already already append configure options. Yeah, but they uh, have to edit the. Uh, no, there's extra econs that you can stuck in. I don't know. Portage might support per package environments already, so you can stuck it into a file and it already does it for you. I know that. That's but <laughs> I, I guess that goes back to the okay. fact that. Is I, uh, the feature and the feature is even documented, right? Yeah, the, the interesting part of that is actually that I don't think we record it, so you can actually create your own package that works in a completely wrong way without us actually knowing, mm. and still you get bugs. So, so yeah. 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 <laughs> you complained. Fix it. That it's a there's. Uh, about three, three or four months ago, we, we added a section on the Gentoo Handbook called uh, Portage Advanced Management, and that contains information on how to use hooks within Portage to, to for instance, hmm? uh, change your own C flex just for a particular package yeah. or enable or disable a feature just for a particular patch. Yeah. Uh, perhaps uh, another question not related to, to the user patching. Um, I frequently use binary packages uh, because of for, for distributing uh, ma many virtual machines and upgrades. One problem that I uh, always face with binary packages is that the moment I build a binary package with a certain use flags, it gets recorded in, in the package metadata that this binary package is just for those use flags. But I cannot create another binary package with a different use flag because it would overwrite the, uh, the first one. But I would really like to use the same repository for f even for small changes on uh, the use flags. Otherwise, I have to have multiple binary package repositories depending on each of my, my system states. There was a very old hack in doing it that took a hash of the use flags as the package do. Um, this was seven years ago. I haven't seen it since, but I'm, I'm pretty certain it's around there somewhere. <laughs> that, that cool. I'll, doc I'll document it and then <laughs> we can support it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that goes back to uh, it's a package manager issue also, and it goes back to do we want to define the binary package support someday? Uh, cannot we just try to do something that sits long with versioning, for example? Uh, uh, no, uh, something like we uh, we do with versioning on a start like that. We used add a number at the end of the target you say that we are using for uh, binary builds. And we check all of them that match a regular pattern. 
So if we find one that matches our local use flags, we use that one. That way we could prevent to we could prevent the problem in a quite easy way. Uh, thank you, Mike. Like as a separator, just use underscore underscore to say okay. Now after everything after those two underscores is now the version for different use flag combinations. Um, and then when we install, just scan all those packages and say, oh, does any of these match what you're calling? I think the the idea with the hack of, of in, instead of storing the binaries uh, with, with package name dash version dot tar dot bz2, just use whatever it was, a hash dot tar dot bz2, it doesn't matter because we have the, the, the packages files itself that is, is an index of all the, the, the binary packages with the use flags. So in, in the end, Porter just first reads the packages files, it looks at uh, which one uh, to pick and then it knows which files to name. So, so indeed, uh, the, the hack of six years ago might probably just be whatever we need. Uh, there is also no another solution which uh, signs use flags are uh, single bytes. Uh, sorry, single bits, as in one or zero. Use, uh, uses are either enabled or disabled. Uh, you can, you can, yeah, you can. No, you can indeed do a bit vector with this uh, thing and use encode it in some way. Yeah, but that that uh, if you add a new a new use flag, uh, if you add an well, if you add a new use flag, you should at least do the revision of the package if you do so. But it's, it also could involve a little bit of policing in that aspect. Or another question, can we just make sure that all EIP 0, 1, 2, and 3, and 4s are removed from the, the tree? <laughs> automatically update? Uh, so uh, uh, first there's a question. So should uh, so uh, removing all the EAPIs from the tree, and then there's the question of deprecating EAPIs but uh, in the end, the package manager will still need to be able to uninstall them and then definitely prob uh, probably support them anyway. But, uh, three, uh, but the inter more interesting question is that who does the work to upgrade them all? Um, like, I, I haven't run stats. Uh, uh, Robin might know that what is the distribution between uh, EAPIs, but from what I recall, Zero still had a very large percentage uh, of the total files. Uh, so what developers bring up is that it gets mentally too hard to uh, keep the diff in uh, mind when working with e-builds and reading them. And now that I am reading this, that I should know that I, uh, this version wor works this way and this version works that way when you're shifting to existing EPIs. Uh. Consider this is the discussion again on uh, user user patching where uh, EAP0 doesn't support the prepare state and later the EAPIs do support it. So you have to involve coding and, and checks on, okay, which EAP, EAPI is this and then I have to change my behavior. And for 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 three or four EPAs, that's still manageable. But the more EPAs you have to to support, I think the code will become more messy. And then deprecating all the EPAs may, may might might be an improvement on uh, on the manageability concerns. Not only that, but just for developers maintaining packages, if you have twenty EAPIs, just knowing the differences between them all is going to be not good, not easy. You can ask the latest recruits because they have <laughs> during their uh, their quizzes all the changes. <laughs> uh, I have one question. Do we have a document stating which is the difference between each API? Yes. Because I don't recall seeing one when I was uh, doing my... Uh, the P PMS uh, appends uh, a list at the end and dev manual has... Uh, you mean yeah, to think that nobody knows it exists until now? So yeah. <laughs> nobody told you, yeah, but I guess it's mostly a question you're, of... You're an old deaf because you didn't have to say say towards the recruiter where it was, but currently recruiters really ask where the, the differences are documented for EAP, EAPIs. Uh, just going back a little bit to um, this, this problem of the EAPIs and deprecating, I think the problem is not so much that we deprecate because um, it's already known that removing support for an 
API is almost impossible. And um, the, the overhead of keeping them around is almost zero because it's there anyway. So, um, and then when you want to say, okay, we don't want to have any new e-builds that are not um, of the latest e API, um, yeah, then, then you get end into this area that I think when, when developers write a completely new e-build, they usually take the latest e API because they write from the scale. I don't know. Okay, not always. Well, maybe that's something that we could work on, but uh, on the other hand, if you're just bumping a package, I just copy it as well, and why would you change it into a new a a a API if it works fine? Um, so there is, again, the, like how much work do you want to inflict on all your co-devs co by just saying, I want to get rid of this eAPI. There's only one eAPI that we can get rid of easily, and that's eAPI2, because all eAPI2 e-builds can be zapped into a free e-build, and then they work. That's that's the only thing we can do, easily. But yeah, I think uh, Graaf has the stats uh, in front of him, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's pretty cool. <laughs> 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 yeah, so you were wondering about eAPI zero. When that's about twenty-two point uh, eight percent, point eight nine to be precise. And then uh, evenly distributed for the others, or. Uh, no, it's it's most of um, them are four. That's about forty-two percent, and then there's fourteen, twelve percent for two and three. Uh, the API one is a sad API. It only has one point five percent of the packages mm -hmm. supporting it. Uh, I don't have five in the list. I have unsupported. Um, I'm guessing that's the same, um, and that's six percent as of today. A very good question, and I have no information on that. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So I am wondering what would be the problem of you stating uh, we are not going to support other uh, EAPIs. So every new code that we add to the portage tree must be at least this API or higher. And uh, if you use an older EAPI and it fails, we might say you. I'm sorry. We are not going to fix it because it's old, and we don't care about that. Then you get the the counter argument that I am doing a security bump. I don't want to re rewrite the e build. I just want to have the security fix there. But uh, it's just a balance. It's, it's no. I guess that's uh, just a value. Uh, uh, qu uh, uh, that you you will find arguments on both sides, but you could uh, inflict it on people if you don't think that it piss, pisses off too many uh, off. Like you could just do it in repo man and just have it be a warning instead of you know critical or whatever the other one is. Right. But that's already like. But what 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 is the value of change though? Does change include m including an e-patch statement for a security bug? It, you, it shouldn't. It shouldn't in that case because they just want to bump it for the patch for security. But that, uh, but adding soft warnings doesn't change the status quo. Everyone's uh, already encouraged to uh, and pretty much told to use the latest things. So if we want any bigger change to be done, that's uh, only going to happen through forcing people. Any new soft warnings, I don't think, will have any effect mm. on the situation. Actually, I just wanted to say that. Uh, if you are pushing a security patch on your build uh, and we are following a system where we don't care about all the APIs and we deprecate them, you don't have the excuse of I'm not going to rewrite the, the build uh, used to update the new API because if in the future an is a security issue traces from an old API, then you will have to rewrite it anyway. 
So it makes no sense to me that excuse, at least. I mean, if you care about security, then you will use the last API that is the one that is going to receive any kind of security patches that is are needed. Uh, I'm saying that APIs might be uh, bad on the future. I mean, they might have security issues on the future. We don't know. Well, that's kind of uh, uh, every core piece of code. Uh, it can't be. Uh, we don't want to formally prove that all the uh, code imported is security uh, uh, secure. So um, that argument doesn't really bring me uh, persuade me anyway. But uh, I guess a good po po uh, polling question is that uh, how many uh, devs here uh, would uh, accept a rule that you would always have to pump it to the latest EAPI or would include security? So, so I guess that so that I guess that answers the question of uh, adding such a rule would piss off lots of people. Most. <laughs> but that, then the then the question comes that if you have that exception, how do you enforce it? Because that's uh, working. You can't really make it automatic. Oh yes, we can. If it's a security or issue, there must be a GL or like a associated. With I guess it. it's like repo man. I am committing a security fix. Ignore the. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so if, if you're doing commits with dash F automatically, that's wrong to begin with. Um, and if you're doing a security commit that cannot possibly wait another second, you can use dash F, but you will have to explain yourself later. And that's okay. I mean, you know, there's always the exception to the rule. Which is what I meant, yeah, making it fail in the default case and having a way out when there's an emergency, it's, I think that's the way you should do something like this. Okay, I guess time-wise, 15 minutes? Uh, so we can discuss a little more, I guess. Um, um, just from a different perspective, a while ago, I wanted to look at how often people use force. Um, on a daily basis, it's about 1% of commits, um, mostly in the obscure arches. And that's not too bad. Um, I don't think we need to forbid it in that case. There are a bunch of, bunch of cases. I see Vapier with th doing it on three S390 occasionally because there's just... <laughs> it's, not, it, it's not really a problem to forbid it. Um, but maybe some more statistics and visibility on it is a good idea. Uh, there is some, some small note about S390. Uh, if you need a box running it, uh, at least during uh, the Euskal encounter, we can get one. So <laughs> just tell me and I can get you a virtual machine there, probably. So if we're going to have those statistics, who's going to monitor that? <laughs> the, the, there are already people who uh, pretty passionately read the commits mailing list because they point out flaws to uh, dev. So I would assume that uh, that uh, part of the crowd will also be I looking at the same thing. Oh, just actually somewhere where we can put it, I realize um, Docside put together the, the QA reports graphs. Um, we just put it in there. It would be useful. We have developers that really enjoy nitpicking on everything that happens, so I don't think we <laughs> should <laughs> problems with monitoring of those commits. <laughs> so any new topics that people would like to touch on before the end? Yeah, we talked long about user patches. Okay, uh, 
uh, I have uh, this crazy idea because uh, there's lately been a lot of fuss uh, because of this uh, slash user moves in UDEF and so on. Uh, we actu actually, as a meta distribution, are probably the only the only distro that can uh, do it right. That means uh, make it configurable which uh, b binaries you want to have uh, in, uh, in root and uh, which binaries you want to have in slash user. So it, I think it would be quite nice to expose the dash dash prefix configure option uh, to the user. But I, I think we don't want to display that. <laughs> 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 uh, actually, it turns out that the root prefix uh, configuration option, like any other configure option, is exposed to the user. Uh, the users have a bus flag, I, recall, I, I think it's extra configure or something like yeah. that. Yeah, that we already talked about that. So yeah. For a particular package, uh, which they can use to push this kind of uh, stuff there. The only thing that you need then is that the build will have a proper install, which I think most of them do. I mean, most of them just need to run make install. So but you you won't you will end up uh, with problems down the road with uh, other places assuming the prefix wasn't changed. So uh, I find it very unlikely to work in practice. There are probably really few packages that uh, that you want to do this with. So. Yeah, well, like I said, it can be, you can already try it. You don't need anything new. Okay. If I try it, you will try it. Worst case, you can always just add a new use flag to the e build that will set the proper root prefix uh, in that particular e build. Uh, so then you make it uh, easy for the user because use flags are, in theory, easy to change. So at least more than envi uh, building environments. And on the other side, you expose which packages uh, you have tried with different uh, root, uh, root, user, uh, root prefixes. But if we have those standard use flags like start going that way, then at some point you end up, every developer must uh, make sure these 20 standard things for ev everything uh, are in order and no, test them and I, I, so I'm forth. Not saying, I'm not saying use that use flag on every package. I'm saying use this uh, use flag on the packages that the developers think should have a, uh, should, uh, that where the developers think the user should be able to choose between user or bar directly. But then if you have that, have those minor things and you, uh, uh, at Bugzilla you will start having user requests as well uh, for uh, that. But yeah, yeah many of them of course the do user, make sense. Please pass the quiz uh, and uh, be a developer and take care of the package and then you do it. <laughs> it's my opinion at least. I mean, uh, it worked with me and a uh, hardened team, so it probably will work with the others. And if you don't like it, it's your problem, not ours. Uh, I, think, um, I think the prefix question was at least answered, so anything else? So, yeah. chairs move on you. Um, I'm a user, not a developer, but I do have some skills. My question is, you guys you know, do a lot of really awesome things for me, and I appreciate it, and I'd like to help you. What do you need? Just e-builds? Uh, e-builds, uh, documentation, uh, testing is good, or, uh, like... Uh, <laughs> Okay, that I know how to do. One e uh, easy way to contribute is testing packages for stable. Do plugins. Do, do pl plugins with, uh, uh, you know, something that I really, really wish somebody would do is help me out with a new website. <laughs> <coughs> Our website is awful. Yeah, 
Yeah, well, that's the thing is, I mean, we've we've got the prototype that uh, Alex Legler did in Bootstrap of a design I made a year and a half ago, um, but it needs to sort of get rolled out to everything else. Um, but yeah. Well, that's the thing, right? Is the, yeah, a Linux distro yeah. should focus on things a Linux distro does, and not on writing its own website framework from scratch and like XML conversion engine. I, yeah. So uh, the way the current website works is you commit to CVS XML files that are run through XSLT and. But no bug number. If you want a tip, if you see that the bug is not answered after a long, long time, you should probably add a comment asking if there is an update on the bug. Because at times this is one of the, the things that I have had with bugs that I have completely missed. Uh, for example, there was this one, uh, a small dog change that Aleister interested me. I'm not sure if he's here now. He, yeah, here he is there. He used to ask me, hey, I need you to push uh, this small change on the documentation. And I told him, okay, I will do it tomorrow. Because now, just now I'm too busy. Uh, I was on a freaking storm of emails. I completely lost that bug. And then like uh, three or four months later, he come and asks, uh, hey, uh, can you take care of, uh, what's the news on this, on this bug? And I told him, oh, fuck, I had completely forgot. This happens more than you think. So if you have a bug that nobody has answered it, you ask, uh, hey, do you have any news on this bug? And you don't say, hey, I want it fixed. But uh, try to ask poli politely. Most of us uh, probably have just forgotten about it or the bug was not properly assi assigned at the time or there is issues like that. Uh, this is a related one there from running the Bugzilla side. Um, some way to go and look, at, look for really old open bugs that were probably solved already would, would uh, be really handy. In, gen in general, for just beyond the scope no, of one team. <laughs> Go find an old bu find find the old bugs that look for the ones that are solved already and ask ask whoever developed. But can this be closed now? That would be really nice. But especially on 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 documentation and also site related things, um, if you put it on Bugzilla, it is more chance that we'll pick it up than through email because. Uh, we 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 I we have a huge backlog on documentation issues, but at least uh, when I log in to uh, Bugzilla, I get the overview. My emails that that just most of the time either the subject doesn't give me the idea. Oh yeah, this is something I have to do, or I think I I've replied to that. And I'm waiting for you to reply or so. Whereas with with bugs, that's that's easier. It's really good for for tracking or so. And Please use Bugzilla for so. But it's also the thing for developers when someone submits something, anything through email, just forward them to Bugzilla. And uh, just a question: You mentioned you mentioned casting of uh, stable um, two stabilized packages. Uh, you mean, for example, okay, I use this in Arch. Uh, um, I will file a bug. Yeah. So, like, uh, you use a stable system, and the next version of KDE comes in. You. Well, you can. There are uh, Arch teams to contact with their exact procedures, but basically means that well, a new version of Firefox in, and does it work on my stable system uh, in on Gen two? And then you report back that for me it worked. Yeah, you should start with stable, so it's not because you, you you use till the arc that you can say yes, this is stable for me. No, you need to use a stable system and just one package so that it works. Yeah. There are two things. One is computing time, which is quite difficult for each and every package. But the most important thing is that we cannot automate uh, testing if an application works. We can automate building it, but we cannot automate testing it.
that's an ID for a Google uh, Summer of Code. I'm looking at someone who's not... Uh, <laughs> Donnie, we have an ID for a Google Summer of Code here. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay. No, there was a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think. Uh, <laughs> no, it was about um, al al allowing you <laughs> users that are currently using stable with a few unstable packages that they have a tool that automatically rep replies towards uh, Gen2 that I run these packages are unstable on an otherwise stable pack uh, system and they work so that uh, stabilization of those packages are... Uh yeah, so every year we do like Gen2 status for half the summer of code and every year I think we drop like 35. Um, so we're trying to keep everything stable as much as Yeah, so we do the stats program every year um, and somebody works on it for like three months and it gets to sort of like a prototype phase where there's a website and people can kind of upload their packages and stuff and it doesn't go anywhere. Um, I think somebody did one last year so I would be thrilled if you checked it out and pick it up and make it do what you want. Um, which one is that? Was it Django based one of the Python uh, things? It's, uh, gosh, I don't, I don't remember. I honestly don't remember. Robin, do you remember what? I mean, we've Intel literally been doing this like project? every year or every other year since like 2006. And everybody's like, stats, that would be awesome. And then... Nobody actually cares enough to pick up the code and do anything with it. Huh? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, why should I be cuter than Peggy when I started producing the stats on the beer? Yeah? I, I, I started producing that on the on dev mailing list, and you didn't say anything. If I had known, I could have done more work on that. <laughs> well, see, that's the thing is, I mean, there's there's a lot of potential value there. Right, but nobody is building all the tools to take advantage of it. Um, so I mean, there's a lot of work to be done to build the tooling to actually deal with that data that we could have, and we don't even have the data yet. Yeah, I mean. but maybe moving uh, forward with a couple minutes left. And play, so please raise your hand who are coming for dinner, and I'll do an exact count from, let's go from back. Let's see. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. You're coming? Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Raise your hand if you think you are cool. Thirteen, fourteen, <laughs> fifteen, <laughs> sixteen. No, no. Uh, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Uh, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three for me. Did I miss more? So okay, I'll f I have to phone and get more space. Uh, more space and see where it goes. <laughs> yeah, if if uh, if any of you guys who aren't developing <laughs> college students, let me know.